Go for main engine and start. We have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Supersonic. Well, I hope you just saw a cool lead-in sequence to this video with the shuttle boosters, fuel tank, and launch pad fully complete. But at the time of filming this introduction, I've not built any of what you just saw. So in this video, I want to cover an explanation of the build, show you where I source the building instructions from, take you through the key build stages, showing you any items of interest as I go, showcase the finished model, and finally wrap up with any thoughts and recommendations that I have on this build. The intention being that if you want to upgrade your creator expert shuttle discovery like I am, you have the intel that you'll need to do this too. Now I know this video and build are way overdue. I've had a lot of people asking me when I'll get to building all these extra elements for the shuttle, as it's something that I had good intentions of doing right at the start of this year. And I'd said that in my video on how to fix this vertical stabilizer for the standard model. By the way, if you've not seen that how to fix video for this model, I'll link to it in the description below and also provide you with a link to the free mod instructions. But now's the time to finally get this build done. So on the screen with me now, I have all of the parts that I'm gonna need. This is roughly gonna be a 4,850 part build that I need to have ready in just three weeks time for a Lego Expo that I've committed to displaying this model at. I'll be building NG Design's original fuel tank and boosters mock. However, since publishing that design, he has published some variation designs. For example, the same fuel tank and boosters mock, but with the main external fuel tank in dark orange versus regular Lego orange. Now I would have liked to go with that option as the color is a better match to the color of the real world space shuttle's fuel tank, but I've already bought the parts, so I'll build his original design using the orange colored parts that I have. I'm also gonna to need to paint several curved wedge brick type parts used for the nose of the fuel tank, as these parts do not come in orange. I've never painted Lego parts before, so this is gonna be something new. I have the paints that I need, but if the result isn't good, NG Design has published an alternate nose design using only Lego parts. In my opinion, it doesn't look as good as the design using the painted parts, but it will be my fallback option and may also be an option for you if you're uncomfortable with painting Lego parts. As for the launch platform, I've decided to build the Brick Frontiers platform. I think he's done a superb job with the design of it. He has, however, designed this platform to suit his version of the shuttle fuel tank and booster rockets. So I suspect I'm gonna to need to modify this platform to suit NG Design's boosters. I'll hopefully better show you that in the build stages section later on in the video. And finally, I thought it'd be fun to add some LED lighting to this model. I have the Light My Bricks lighting kit for the Space Shuttle Discovery model. I don't intend to fully install this kit, maybe just the main thruster and cabin lights. And perhaps I need to add some additional lights for the booster rockets. I'm actually not quite sold on lighting this up, but I'll figure it as I go and share this with you later on in the video. I'm gonna switch things up in the studio to film in an overhead view. Let's get this build started. I started this build project by building the foundation of the Brick Frontiers launch platform as I needed to figure out how to install LED lights, a flicker effect board, connection board, and battery box to it so that I could light up the underside of the booster rockets when they are seated on the platform. After a lot of trial and error, I decided to modify the platform to house the LED components and battery box in the center section that will be underneath the fuel tank and then run four LED lights to either side into these two recessed areas that you can see that will contain the supports for the two booster rockets. I've also included a removable rear hatch that will allow access to the battery box when everything is covered up to allow me to power on the lights. 
And moving along, you can see that I've now added the booster rocket supports, some of my own custom detailing into the two recessed areas, and I've fitted the four LED lights around each booster rocket support structure. You can see that I've completed the support and details on the right hand side, but I've deliberately left the left hand side incomplete to show you how I've routed the wires. The parts that I need to finish this left hand side are up on the right. Switching the lights on, I think this looks excellent and I hope once the booster rockets are installed will give me that simulated rocket thrust lighting effect that I'm after. As for the space shuttle itself, I fitted three LED lights to the rear engines with a supporting flicker effects board and battery box. This was super easy to do following the instructions provided by Light My Bricks and involved only minimal disassembly of the rear of the model and disassembly and then reassembly of the engines themselves. But once complete and switched on, I think this looks superb. I look forward to seeing how this looks once the shuttle is mounted up on the fuel tank and presented on the launch platform. I took a pause and doing more build work on the launch platform now that I have the LED lighting figured out to build the key sections of the shuttle's large external fuel tank per NG Design's instructions. The fuel tank is made up of three large sections that are joined together. Each section is essentially a Technic frame that is covered in panels that have curb slope bricks and tiles attached to them, which when complete yield cylindrical shaped sections. This first section will be the base of the fuel tank, and for the middle section, I've deliberately left this uncovered to show you what the Technic frame looks like. As you can see, I've pre-built all of the covering panels and these will attach to the frame all around by the exposed studs of the shown Technic elements. The last section here will be the top third and nose of the fuel tank. This is a surprisingly dense and complex Technic structure. and I'm impressed with the design of this. The next step will be to attach all of the panels and different elements to make up the interesting detailing of the top third of the fuel tank. Moving on, with the body of the fuel tank now fully assembled, NG Design's design calls for several parts of the nose cone of the fuel tank and also the base to be painted orange as the parts he's used in his design are not made by Lego in orange. As many of you will already know from what I explained in my giveaway video recently, Although I bought what was supposed to be a close match to Lego Orange, being this Tamiya X6 color, I thought I'd get a better result with painting the parts if I sprayed on the color versus brushing on the paint. And as I don't have an airbrush, I ordered what was supposed to be a close match to that X6 color, but in spray can form. And on preparing and undercoating and then coating the parts in this orange, I realized very quickly that the paint was unfortunately not a good match for Lego Orange, so I was faced with a choice. I could either buy new parts from Bricklink and hunt down a better orange paint and try again, or opt for plan B, which is to build NG Design's alternate nose cone that does not require you to paint parts. I also thought I would design my own alternate rounded looking base for the fuel tank, which uses only regular non-painted Lego parts. I of course opted for plan B, and after placing two orders for new parts from Bricklink and waiting for those to arrive in the post, I was able to build the new fuel tank base, which turned out to look excellent and build the elements for the alternate nose cone, allowing me to fully complete the build of the fuel tank. After finishing this off, I noticed it had a good feel to it. So I thought the only appropriate thing to do would be to measure it up. It is 68 centimeters long, which is about 27 inches. And I measured the girth in private earlier. That is 33 centimeters or 13 inches. And I think these are very respectable measurements that would even give Jeff Bezos something to be jealous of. Next was to build out the two booster rockets. The build for these two pieces was simple and straightforward. Rotating this one around, you can see that for the inside of each booster rocket, there is a repeating brick built type structure, which is then surrounded in plates with curved slope tiles attached to them to give these rockets their cylindrical shape. Of note, there are these two pins that will connect the boosters to the fuel tank. And I actually made an error with what you're seeing. I missed a build stage. Each of these booster rockets should actually be a full eight studs longer. I corrected this later on in the build when I was doing a test fitment of these two boosters to the fuel tank. Speaking of testing things out, during the build of the fuel tank and when I was just starting the booster rocket build, I did a check to see if NG Design's fuel tank and boosters would fit properly on the Brick Frontiers launch platform that I was midway through building. 
And as I'm showing here, the position of the two boosters is actually too wide by one stud on either side. The Brick Frontiers launch platform is designed for his version of the fuel tank and boosters, not NG Design's version that I'm building. So I need to shift the two voids with the booster supports of the launch platform inwards. And I'll do this by reducing the center section by two studs, increasing the outer section by one stud each, and shifting the supports and all the internal detailing inwards. This took a bit of work, but it's all done now and it's looking good. You can see also that I've progressed the platform by adding on the surface tiling and supporting plates and elements for the greebling to be added later. Of note, I also add an extra layer of dark stone gray plates to the underside of the launch platform. And if you build this platform, I highly recommend you do the same. It dramatically improved the strength and robustness of the platform, and it also looks good too. Fast forward a couple of nights of building, and this launch platform is now fully complete, and it's looking superb. You'll get a better view of this shortly in the showcase, but looking at it in this overhead view, I'm hoping you get a sense of the solidity and the size of it. It's turned out to be better than I expected. I also removed the railing type details I originally added at the rear of the platform as they were looking odd to my eye. And I also made some updates to the details in the two recessed areas of the platform. By the way, many of the details in the two recesses I'm showing you here are of my own making. Oddly, even though I think overall the Brick Frontier has done a great job with the design and fine details of this launch platform, in his instructions, he's left these recessed areas looking very plain. So if you're building this platform, feel free to examine my video and do something similar if you want to. I'm gonna let you look at the finished model for a short while, layering in some audio from the Space Shuttle Discovery's final launch and mission. But please make sure you continue watching to the end of the video as I have some important concluding thoughts and recommendations on this build to share with you. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. <laughs> Will Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom and Charlie Hobai as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Z is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bow and mission specialist Al Drew and Nicole Stott. That's better. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine tune the flight. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour. It's altitude 37 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles. Discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail. For those of you that watch my videos regularly, this is all gonna look a little different with you being able to see a bit of the side walls of the studio. This is because this model is so tall, I had to use a wider angle lens on my camera that is different to the lens that I normally use for these face to camera type scenes so that I could vertically fit the model in frame. As you can see, this is an impressively sized mock that I think makes for a very eye catching and good looking display piece. And now that it's finished, I'm happy that I took this project on and that I've finally been able to share it with you. Now I wanna keep what I'm about to say very simple so that it's clear. Based on the high quality of the Brick Frontiers launch platform and what I can see of his very good looking and accurate design for the Space Shuttle's fuel tank and booster rockets, if you would like to build something similar to what I've shown in this video for your Crater Expert Space Shuttle Discovery model, my recommendation is that you do not build NG Designs fuel tank and boosters like I've done but instead that you build the Brick Frontiers version. That way you can build this superb launch platform and the Brick Frontiers real world accurate space shuttle fuel tank and boosters 
and integrate everything correctly with your Space Shuttle model without having to make changes to the launch platform like I had to or worry about painting parts. Also, and I don't want to be negative about another designer's work, so I won't go into specific details, but I feel that the quality of NG Design's instructions and some aspects of the actual build for the fuel tank was not optimal. I actually had to make a lot of adjustments to this model as I built it. And I feel that if I had my time over, I would have selected to go with the Brick Frontiers version of the fuel tank and boosters instead, but his designs were not available at the time that I bought NG Design's instructions. With that recommendation given, if you have any questions regarding this project, just leave a comment in the video and I'll get back to you. And remember also that if you've not modified your Space Shuttle Discovery's tail fin to fix it, I published a video on a fix for that with a few other cosmetic mods covered as well. And I'll put a link to that video and the supporting free mod instructions in the description below. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon.